I was just thinking about this because I was moving some stuff around and I realized I have a ton of fixed blades and a lot of them are EDC a bull ish. Like I have a whole handful. Unfortunately, a lot of them are identical. Let's see if this is going to work. I'll give it a minute and a half or so and see who shows up. But I was, I was thinking because I had this and I was using it this morning. <laughs> hey, okay. See, it tells me no one's here. What's up? I had my little Morgan out this morning. Morning, Jake. Morning, Pura. And I know I know a lot of people at work. Um, I'm thinking about changing the time frame for these live feeds, but the problem is my videos go up at four. And if I do live feeds, that means I'd have to do them later in the evening. Well, there's other stuff going on. So that's another thing we can talk about, but there's three of y'all here. So I had this out and I was using it, this little Morgan um, custom that I carry a lot. And I was thinking to myself, you know, like, I've done videos about it before, but really, how many people truly EDC a fixed blade? Um, so I was, I can just slip it in my pocket. And then I've got the, uh, this little knife that I can use. And not only is it a great little knife, it's a really attractive little handmade custom. And so, you know, nice little file work and stuff. So it's not just a useful little piece of kit that I've got in my pocket. It's also attractive and it gets attention when you have this people people notice it even the sheath here i'll show you the sheath on this even is really well done and we've got a lot of stuff that we can talk about i mean that is a really attractive uh gaelic or celtic design on it and things like that and i was just thinking about it, i was like a lot of people like make, making fun of this um and I was like, I like carrying a fixed blade EDC. I like having something nice and small. And as a matter of fact, this kind of exists because of this. This is just a little smaller than I would like. So I was thinking like, how many people really use a fixed blade? And then, you know, the good things about a fixed blade for EDC, you know? I don't have to, if I'm wearing gloves, I don't have to play around with the lock. I don't have to worry about closing it. I can set it down. I can pick it right back up. There's no pocket clip that gets in the way. It's comfortable. It doesn't catch and snag because there is no lock bar. It's exactly the same from side to side. It is truly ambidextrous. And I'm like, hmm, I really do enjoy EDCing a fixed blade. I really do, especially a nice small one. But there's some things like, I mean, you can't EDC, but then there's other things like that. That's not a functional EDC. This is that Almar, or not, uh, this is A.G. Russell Sting. I have an A.G. Russell Sting that um, that I carried in my boot for a lot of years as like a backup, as a secondary backup, just in case I needed just a piercing, just to let the air out of something. You know what I mean? So not all of them are EDC friendly. This is a nice little EDC friendly knife. Um, if I'm gonna carry this, I just take the soft loops real quick. I just yank the soft loops off of this, which takes a matter of a few seconds. I put it back on this and I EDC carry this on my belt and then you have this the one that i made for my daughter this gets edc'd and it has the it acts off of my sea snake on it so do you guys carry do you guys edc a fixed blade i'm just curious and i'm just kind of killing time until my daughter gets out of the shower we just got back from working out um i actually have edc'd this because where i'm at in california the the carry laws for a fixed blade are rather loose. I can, as long as I don't have this covered by clothing, as long as you can see, then um, as long as you see I'm carrying it, I'm not violating any laws. I'm not carrying concealed, which is weird to me because I don't have to have a pocket knife out where you can see it. You know what I'm saying? Like if this is covered by my shirt, I'm not carrying concealed. But to tell you the truth, this is a significantly larger knife. I don't understand some of these rules and laws and things like that, so. Uh, I do like that little Bark River gunny scandy. It is nice. I mean, I BDC this. I BDC this concealed. I shouldn't say that out loud, but I like to stick this without the, like I think I told you guys this the other day. I like to not have the clip on this and just slide this in my belt at an angle 
and this catches and it won't go any further and it's it's great there's another option that i've thought about is i was going to make just a little nub that would screw up here and then just round it off nice like a piece of brass with a screw in it like what you would see on the um cold steel had some of their really high-end uh Bowie knives that had that. It just had a little nub. It didn't have a belt loop. It had a little nub, and you would put that in your waistband, and that would sit there, and that little nub would keep it from falling down in your pants, and then you could just slide it in your belt. I kind of do the same thing with this, but I was thinking that little nub would come in handy so it wouldn't fall down any further. So I, I carry, I actually carry a fixed blade EDC a lot, and I didn't even think about it. Who? What? What are you talking about? I may have to look at that. You'll have to uh, let me know who it is. We may have to look at issuing a cease and desist. I mean, I, I gotta protect that design. Mike Beach. Well, we could do that. I can move some stuff. I have my laptop here. Let's take. Let's take a look at it. I mean. Relocate all this steel that happens to be here. Would you say it was Mike Veach? V E A. Oh no, my cord's stuck. I found a. I found some contracts to bid on. Let's look at that. Let's see here. Mike V E A C H. Let's see. Password or fingerprint. Um. Do you know what the knife is called? There aren't any matches for that. So if you can tell me what it was, I like the Marie. Uh, well, I mean, that's great, but I have a design that's been released. 20 CB with in-house heat treat is great. I'm not gonna lie to you, there have been some issues um, there have been some issues with some of the 20 CB. I've heard a lot of people complain about it. I don't think I'm making any more knives than 20 CB, uh, for a couple of reasons. I haven't been happy with the results. I actually had to throw some blanks away. I'm not going to get into the whole thing about that. I had to throw some knife blanks away. A significant amount of steel got disposed of because there was issues with it. And two, it's so goddamn expensive. And I think I can get away. There's other steels that I can get away with that are every bit as good for the purpose, you know, not everybody needs 20 CV. Um, I may look at trying to get some knives in 14 C and do some Sandvik steel. Um, I would like to see, I, I reached out to, I reached, I reached out to Wee Knife Company and asked them about, uh, I reached out to Wee Knife Company about doing this in uh, some materials that might not be as expensive and see if we get more of a budget version of this. I haven't heard back from them yet. I reached out to, to pretty big companies about um, knife designs, uh, about getting this done. Uh, I know you guys want this to come out. I, I'm reaching out today to another company to see if they'd be interested in doing a small uh, bird and trout knife, which this would come in perfect for. Uh, I have the designs for it. All I have to do is send them off. And the my favorite version of the sea snake so far has been the all blacked out one. I like the all blacked out one. It it's not so it's not even so much that it is different. The blade feels the blade. It just feels cool. Um, I don't know Aus Ten. I haven't done enough with it that I would want to go ahead. Uh, it's PVD. So PVD is not a coating, Snuzz. PVD is a uh, process. It's positive vapor dis deposition deposition and you can do a lot of things with it so it's not like pvd is a coating pvd you can coat different things and you wind up with different colors there's all kinds of different things that you can add pvd is a process um 3v i yeah 3v i haven't worked with it but well, i have worked with it just for like ma uh, like uh, refinishing and things like that it rusts 3v has a tendency to be three and four v are pretty rusty uh they have a tendency to to be pretty rusty. Anything on that, Greg? I wanted to look that up because, like, if he's selling a knife that is too similar, I would 
have to ask the U.S. rep to uh, confer and issue a I'm not going to do anything in S35BN. Therapeutic Edge, what's up, Pete? Guys, if you don't follow Peter's channel, you absolutely should. It's a lot of fun. He's got a lot of good videos. Um, are you still the editor? Are you still the editor at large for that, um, for that online magazine? Are you still the editor? I can't remember what the name of it is. It's not that I'm not a fan of it. I just think that there's so many knives out there in S35VN that, that people are just people are just sick of it. That was Slicey. Okay. I couldn't remember if it was you or Slicey Dicey. So. Okay, yeah. Send me a link. Don't, don't do it here, though. Like, email it to me. So. Um. But no, EDCing a fixed blade, it's it's a it's an option. And when I was in the military, I didn't even think about it. When I was in the military, I carried this for a while uh, because I didn't like some of the knives. I carried a, uh, I carried an SRK. I carried uh, this is my Puma Bowie. Um, so I like this a lot. What's up, Casper? Um, so when I was active duty, I definitely carried a fixed blade. And I just I don't know why I kind of like oh EDCing a fixed blade. That's kind of silly. I had said that at one point and I actually did a video about it. And then I was like, you know, I did it for a lot of years. I don't know why I'm like, I don't know why I was like, I don't know, EDCing a fixed blade. But and then I think about it, I EDC a fixed blade a lot. So guys, there's 16 of y'all here and only eight likes. That definitely helps the channel when you guys drop a like. Um, so yeah, like I said, this, I've been carrying this a lot and I had it in my pocket yesterday and I was like, why don't I? I don't want to do a, a video about, like, just do it. Here's the thing. If you have a small EDC fixed blade, they're not going to fucking know about it. You know? If, if you just got something that you can carry and it's, you know, they're not going to see it. I would, I, sometimes it's better to ask permission or ask forgiveness than ask permission. Following the rules is for squares. <laughs> Cold Steel Spartan. The Cold Steel Spartan is great. Um, I've had that knife for years, and it's definitely, I just did that video. So if you guys haven't watched it, I did a video on it, and I was surprised it didn't get, um, I was surprised it didn't get more traffic. Like, Cold Steel videos usually do really well. I was kind of surprised it didn't get. It's like five out of ten on my list of videos that I've received uh, that I've got had go up. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, now, now there are some that like, I, I don't think I'd carry this mainly because just the way it carries, I do carry it around the house. I'm not gonna lie. I carry this. This was a gift from a subscriber and I do carry this and I put a super aggressive edge on this. This thing would lay a, no joke. Um, you can just put. 440, 40, 440HC is one of those weird steels that that edge doesn't feel as aggressive as it is, but it's real aggressive. Like here, I'll show you. I have an old t-shirt that I keep around as a rag and it just amazes me. Like just put it up against it and it just lays it open like two layers deep. And I didn't put any, that was just no pressure. 440 HC, I forget how much I like it. And it's one of those steals that people are like, oh, it's 440. I love it. I love 440 HC. Um, that might, I might make a couple knives in 440 HC. I'm going to try and make a buoy that's going to be somewhere around the lines of this or this. Or maybe a, I haven't decided how I'm going to do it, but my big problem is I need a, uh, I need a drill press. 440HC, 440C differences. I mean, you'd have to look that up. Uh, I do believe. Wait, one. The box is right here. This is. Not listed on the box. I don't have my. You know what we have here? 
we have the wealth of human knowledge at my fingertips because my laptop is right here. Be yuck. Online special. Why, why wouldn't it? Let's go ahead and look. I think I looked at, last time I looked at it on, that's, no, that's the special pro. I'm looking guys, I'm a looking. Amazon. Um, Geez, Amazon, you got some horrible, you have some horrible descriptions of your stuff on here. Let's go to Knife Center. Knife Center, Buck 119 Special. Sometimes you just gotta tell Siri exactly what you want. Buck 119 Special, and this is where the person got it because it was from Specifications, 420 HC. I'm sorry, it is 420 HC. I don't care, it's still, it's a good, that's a good steal. 420 HC, not 440. I apologize. At any rate, oh, it's amazing on this. I, do you guys remember ATS-34? ATS-34, there was a, a whole bunch of guys that were making stuff at ATS-34. I still like ATS-34. As a matter of fact, if you were to look on this blade, this Morgan is in ATS-34 steel. So, sorry about that, that long, drawn-out thing. I'm not good on the internet. Buck Heat Treats. Yeah, Buck is another company that is like... Um, uh, Buck is like cold steel. They get their heat treat right every time. I've never had a buck with a, with a bad heat treat. Um, I've never had a buck knife with a bad heat treat, ever. I'm sorry for good heat treat. I don't... I like... I like... I don't like 154 CM... Or C, I don't like CPM... 154 and I don't like AEBL either um, AEBL just doesn't have it doesn't get that toothy edge for a kitchen knife it's great but for like an outdoor knife a AEBL just does not get that toothy outdoor cutting edge that I want it just doesn't ever feel sharp um, and it just does, it feels slippery s35 VN when you get it about if you get s35 VN above like 600 grit it just, it's still sharp. It'll cut paper, it'll cut hair. But like when you try to cut something that needs some tooth, it just doesn't have it. Um, you find out with some of the powdered steels. So, you know, it's, uh, I like Nitro V. Nitro V, you can get a good aggressive edge on it. Sadly, it has some buck QC. So that is, buck has some hit or miss stuff like their u.s made stuff seems to be great but i do have a small little buck folder that is right here and i won this at a shooting competition at the at a gun range it had it they i walked in they're like hey you want to do the, there was a pistol shooting competition here if you want to jump like it's just we're giving away a prize and it's like we not we don't have it full i was like yeah sure and i won this this was like second place i won because <laughs> I fucking, I took second place because they had a, a part of the, uh, part of the, the competition where they like hand your gun to the person to your left. So the guy on the far left, his gun went to the guy on the far right and everybody's guns shifted. And I wound up with a gun that I was not comfortable with. Um, and I had to shoot. I still shot well, but like, I was doing really well until we did that. And then the poor guy next to me was a little guy and I handed him my SIG and I have the grips I have on it because I have really big hands. It's really big. And he, he gets it and he's like, are you serious? But this has some, some QC issues. And this is a buck. This is a buck 373 that was made in China. And I'm trying to find it. It says on one of, yeah, this was a, 
This one was made in China and it has some QC. I haven't had QC issues with their American made stuff. Always their overseas stuff, their offshore stuff. And they don't have a lot of it. A lot of it's these little folders. It still is a really nice knife though. Am I ever going to do an update video on the Lackey? Why would I? It's great. Like I shouldn't have to. I've done two separate videos on the Lackey. I don't need to revisit it a third time. I don't, I just don't, I just don't feel the need, even though a video, like, okay. So I have some videos that have a ton of traffic, but I still don't revisit them because I may have talked about that topic two or three times. I don't think it just makes much sense. If you want to know about the Lackey, go back and find my other two videos about the Lackey. I would rather, I'd rather have, this sounds self, sounds self damaging because the channel could do better if I did that. But if, if I was to play the algorithm like that and the videos that have done well and then just redo them, it just feels, I, I would rather have new content that maybe doesn't get as many views, but provides useful information to someone. Because the whole thing about this is like issues that I find with knives and things like that. Everybody's like, oh, you're just, you're so, I was like, oh, well, I mean, like, people get upset because they send me a knife and I point out things about it. And they're like, oh, I can't unsee that. I kind of wish I hadn't sent it to you. But if I don't do that, then you have people that are walking into things blind. But back to what I was saying about EDCing a fixed blade. There's a lot of EDCable fixed blades on the market. I've designed two, um, only one of them's available. And it, when you come down to it, even this, which is a, a larger knife, is still, you could EDC this. This is not out of the realm of what you could carry. So, I mean, I EDC this, but I also am six foot three, 230 pounds. So uh, these still are available places. If you, if you want a production one, they're still available. I mean, I don't make any money. Uh, if you, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to find a company that'll do it. I, I, I told Russell yesterday, I was like, I'm already talking with, I'm already talking with people about doing that, uh, drop point one. I have, I already have the designs and everything. Do I know where? No, but just look up uh, the Wii 919 Stonefish. I'm sure it's still available places. Uh, it, the price point on it is, was the problem. Um, the price point on it was an issue because everybody likes fixed blades, but no one wants an almost $300 fixed blade. And the fact is you can, at this point now, get a custom fixed blade from some people um, in lesser materials, granted, but you can get a custom knife from a lot of people at, at that same price. Um, now, the quality of that build and the materials they used was was top notch. And that's why they were like, we couldn't do it for less than 300. But they actually did. They did it. 300 was was MSRP. Um, and I think map pricing. A lot of places had it just at map. But. Uh, A stonefish before you want to think about grabbing one to support you. But see, you're not supporting me. If you get a stonefish now, you're not supporting me. I already got paid out for those. Like, there is no money. If you want to support me, you got to buy a, a sea snake. These are the ones that are still in production. I'm still getting royalties from these. There is no more money coming from these. They made a 400-piece run, and they paid me out for the whole run. So there is no more money coming from this knife. I don't get any... If you go and buy one, you don't get anything to me. It just goes to the company that that has it on, on hand. So like I said, if you want to support me, wait till another design comes out or something <laughs> or get a custom. There you go, Aiden. There you go. Like I said, I'm, I'm waiting on somebody to say they want this. I don't see the sense in throwing this on the grinder and doing a bunch of work and doing things to it. If, if I don't have somebody rogering up that they want the knife, I think I have, Two or three of these left that I can, two or three blanks in 20 CV. The, the sea snake is great. And the nice thing about the sea snake is it's, it's one of those knives because it's, it's like right around 50 bucks. So like, even if you use it and scratch it all up and things like that, I mean, it's not like it's that big a deal. You're going to have to eat. Uh, I don't ever remember seeing an email. Send me another email. I've had 
Um, I've, I've had problems with my email that I didn't get stuff. So just shoot me another email. If I don't, guys, if you send me an email, I don't respond, follow it back up. Uh, I've been having problems with my email. What was your, uh, I'll look right now. What's your email address? And what email did you use? If you tell me what your email address was. And I'll look right now and see. And if I do, I'll, I'll mark, I'll flag it and I'll mark it for third sea snake. Don't, you're not going to be able to make a drop point out of it. It's so thin, you're going to burn it up. Like it, it's seriously, you're not going to be able to do it. I'm going to tell you right now, I had people do it and they're like, I ruined it. I have to buy a new one. Because it's so thin and the way it's ground, you're not going to get what you're looking for out of it. You can't make this into a drop point or it'll be like that long. So, uh, tactical ass for a knife. Snake, and that, yeah, I was gonna say the nice thing about the the sea snake is it's in a steel that doesn't rust very easily and if you're in a water environment you just take the scales off and dry everything off underneath the get out from under my computer um i carry this and i have never done anything to prevent rust on it i was just curious i've carried this and been sweaty and never cleaned up and there is just the tiniest bit of oxidation under the scales but i don't think it's the actual blade i think it's the screw and the the post that's inside the handles. Uh, I've never seen any actual rust on this one. And this is the one I've carried and put through its paces and scratched up. And you can see it's gotten a lot of use. Here, I'll show you. Let's see if I can capture that. And it's held up incredibly well and it gets used all the time. You can see all the scratches, like it's all scratched up and dinged up and it's, it's done a lot of cutting. And so it hold, it seems to hold up pretty well in a wet environment. Um, I'll tell you my custom stonefish, uh, the 20 CB on my custom stonefish will rust a lot faster because it's a higher rock well. So there's more, there's less, there's more chromium in the carbides. So less at the surface. And that's how that works. Somebody was asking about the, these are at like 64 rock well after heat treat. So this supposed, this one's heat treated. This one's at like 64 rock well. Um, so what happens is when you do it that way and you get it to its maximum and it's edge retained, you've, you've, what you've done is you've, you've incorporated more of the chromium in the steel into the carbon and made those chromium carbides. And so you have less chromium oxide available at the surface. There's less chromium available in the steel to then throw the chromium oxide on the surface. So that's typically what you see. And so that's why this has a tendency to rust a lot less. Alex has one. I don't even own one of my own customs. I have a blank set aside for myself. Aiden, thank you much, sir. Guys, there you go. You want to support the channel? Aiden does. Aiden's a paying member and still supports the channel like that. It's great. It's just like, that's why I do the, the whole thing at the beginning of videos with the uh, um, showing the channels. I can't afford to give every channel I love a little bit of money, but what I can is I can provide you guys to their videos and then you guys watch their videos i provide those videos to you guys so you can see them and things like that that's like i said support the channels you love it's it's one of the easiest ways i can think of i create enough content that i can put videos up that incorporate their let me link up had somebody say that they wouldn't their card wouldn't let them link to becoming a paying member i think that was jack jack said it wouldn't let him he kept getting declined and i was like that is weird I came back from the, I just got back from the gym, so. I can't make this a long video because I do want to shoot a video today. And there's a video going up at 4 p.m. There'll be a video every day this week, Monday through Friday. I'm going to try and keep that up. I may have to, you know, there may be a couple weeks here and there where I'm not able to get five videos up, but I'm going to try and at least get four videos up every week. So expect at least Monday through Thursday. Uh, I put up a video yesterday. If you haven't watched it, you probably should. And like I said, I'm building, I have built a list below 
Oh, okay. Um, I've built a list below of links to, like, if you guys need the tools and stuff, uh, everything that I had on Amazon, and I did it, like, I set up my affiliate link program. Um, it was way easier. I tried to do it once before, and it was really complicated and obscure and things like that. Uh, what animals do, would you... Well, what materials do you would with... Oh. Kind of obscure. I was having a hard time with that one. I do know that I have some some subscribers and people that watch my videos that are not native English speakers. So I'm just trying to figure that one out. I believe what that's what you're asking about. EDC Journeys, what's up, bud? So, yeah, that's that's like I said, that's just one of those things that I've started doing was adding those videos in so that you guys can go see them. And the, like I said, the affiliate link down below, uh, two reasons. I make money on it when you guys buy stuff. Even if you buy stuff that's not what's listed. Like if you log in with my affiliate link and you're like, I don't see any of that stuff I want, but I'm going to buy a 12 pack of sodas with that are made with plain sugar and it gets sent to your house. I still do get, apparently, make money on that. So, um, but I've done that and I have other affiliate links like the, oh, oh Olight sale. Guys, check out the Olight sale. Uh, they've got a lot of stuff that's like 70, like 50% off on their summer sale. I'm not sure how long it runs. Uh, did you finish the sharpening instructor videos? No, I have not because I just, I've been busy with stuff. I do need to do some of the grit progression stuff. I did one on how I test edges. Uh, it was just a little short. It wasn't really even short. I just did a video on how I test edges and things like that. But um, I'm gonna try and film grit progression this weekend because I do have a couple knives that need sharpened. So, like, what I look for, how I progress, like, what the issues are. No, I refuse to. You know why? Because I know the guys that, I know the guy that owns um, Half Face Blades, and they have blatantly copied his designs. I mean, you can't tell me they haven't. So, I, I just, I'm not going to. And I've heard that they're not that great. So, I don't, I just choose not to. Um allegedly, in my opinion, have copied his designs too closely. Um, and they're, they're capitalizing on some of the same things that he does. So I don't like it. And I know Andy, and he's a good guy. Met him a few times. He's a Navy SEAL. I, don't, I just don't think that it's fair. Um, I, don't, I don't like that. So, especially in the same town. Like, Andy's out here in San Diego. Uh, do you like S45 VN? Yes, I do like the S45 VN on this, but I need to get something else in it so I can see how it performs and how it sharpens on something that's a good bit thicker. This does do very well. It holds up really well. It holds an incredibly nice edge. Um, even for the tasks that I put it through, it seems to be pretty wear resistant because I cut a lot of cardboard with this. Um, and so it, it does a lot of cardboard cutting and things like that. It, uh, it doesn't seem to show where it holds its edge pretty well. It's fairly easy to sharpen. And it gets a nice toothy edge at like the 6, 8, 600, 800,000 grit range. It's nice toothy. But like I said, this is so thin at the very front of this blade that like I would, I'd like to see something else in it and see how it sharpens up when you've got more contact, more bevel, uh, maybe a different heat treat. You know, different people do things differently. So. Is it good? Yeah, I I like it. I use this a lot, as you can tell. I mean, look at the look at the sheath. It's all it gets a lot of it gets a lot of time of use. It's it stays here on the workbench pretty much. It lives on my workbench like 24-7. <laughs> this has been in my bedroom. On my dresser. Is a convex grind hard to maintain? Not really, because I basically, since I sharpen in a convex, the convex grind, even though mine, you can see, I've done like a basically a micro apexed edge on it. It's not like abrupt, it's not an abrupt, um, how do I say this? It's not like I'm just doing a V grind and I'm shortening it. It's it's it kind of follows that angle. If you know what I'm saying. Lunch is over. Well, you take it easy, sir. I ordered a used 
piece of kit tools so that I can turn my hand drill, my hammer drill, into a drill press uh, because I do need that here and I found it used. I will put a link to that as well in the, in the, in the videos so that like, as a matter of fact, let's do that right now um, while we're talking because I, I do want you guys to be able to see like the stuff that I use. I think I've got all the, the tools except for a set of jewelers screwdrivers that uh Ooh, i'm watching this i'm watching this california uh, i'm not gonna show it you can um i'll look at well yeah i'll look it up for you i found it used let me uh Let's see, Let's see if it comes up. This one. I'll pull it up and I'll show you. But if you're gonna get it, um, it's got its own drill press plate and basically puts your drill in it. So my only concern is, is that gonna screw up the chuck? So. Um, if it comes and it doesn't fit my needs, I'm definitely going to, um, send it back because I can get returns on it. Uh, but I'm going to put a link to that. I'm actually going to do that right now. That's going to be the newest affiliate. Um, yeah, it's like used, it's like 40, $40 or something like that. Text only, short link, copy, and then we add this in. So now that I thought about that, that was actually kind of cool because now I can just kind of just go in and I can drop this in to my affiliate links. Settings, default, upload defaults. And I'll just go in here and I'll add that. Let's see. I'll add it, but I'll definitely let you know how it uh, how it works out. So that's going to go right below the soft side knife case, and I'm going to list it as drill press stand or f conversion. Drill press converter. That's what I'm gonna list it as. So if you want to do it, that way you can use my affiliate link. It's in there, um, and I'm just gonna put a. Uh, I'm gonna put. I'm gonna do that as a community tab post, so you guys can just go to the uh, community tab if you want to see it. It'll be on the community tab thing. So I'll do that right now. I can do both while we're talking. That way you've got it. Create post. So, but yeah, I, I like the idea of EDCing a fixed blade. It makes it easy. It's it's so much better if like you're in gloves. Uh, I made a, I made, I carried this on the job site a few times um, just because I wanted to see, and it's so much easier just not to have to mess around. Like I couldn't, I'm not gonna lie to you. Like if I was on a job site and I was wearing gloves, I could not carry this knife, it's too thin. To get my finger down in there, it's, it's I've tried it with gloves on, it's not as easy, especially if you're using like thicker gloves, like leather gloves, like when you're doing a lot of shoveling and things like that. So, um, to drill, press kit to turn your hand drill, drill press. So there you go, I'm making that community tab post right now. I keep hitting, this thing has the trackpad and I usually use a mouse, but you can't really turn off your trackpad on a MacBook. And I keep, I, I get my thumb on it and then I drag the cursor around and then I wind up starting typing in the middle of something that I didn't want. Paste. 
So there you go. There's a link to that drill press in the community tab right now. I can close that. Close. So, close. Sorry about that. I just think it started edit, EDCing. Oh, editing. <laughs> I get you. A fixed blades. If you haven't gone back to a folder, I, I do. I like it. The only issue is like there are rules and regulations that go along with a fixed blade that don't go along with folding mics, which seems silly to me. That would be like saying that there's. That's like making different rules between different types of pew pews. It's silly to me that one type of knife has rules. Like, like I said, I can carry this pretty much anywhere. I don't have to worry about it being concealed. I don't have to do that, but I cannot carry a fixed blade anywhere I want in my pocket. Like this, I carry this in my pocket a lot. I could get, I could get hemmed up for this, but not a folding knife. I just, it seems silly. But it is the truth. It's just the way it is. Later, Jake. So I do, uh, I can't stay on here too much longer, but we'll give this conversation a little bit more time. Um, maybe another 15 minutes or so. We'll just make it an hour. So if there's still 21 people here, which is surprising. I am going to film a video today. If I don't have to take my daughter to ice skating, I'm going to film a video today. Uh, so I haven't decided what I'm going to pull out to do yet. I'm pretty sure it's going to be that Civivi Imperium. I'm pretty sure I'm going to do first impressions on this because I do need to get this back to, I need to get this back to Tino. This is his knife. Um, so I need to do this knife and the other knife that he has here with me so that I can get them back to him. But then I also have all of Jared's knives here. But Jared said not to rush. I can do those knives whenever I want. I also want to get that Sen cut out and look at it uh, more than just like a, a passing glance. I've looked at it like twice. I'll pull stuff out. I'll look at stuff. And, and I have a couple of full custom knives here at the house that I want to do some videos on that are just sitting here in my garage. <laughs> I got like, uh, let me see. Allow me to allow me to peruse that and make sure I got it. Gotcha. I got it. Um, there's a there's a lot of states that just really don't have much. Ohio doesn't really have much in the in the way of like rules on what you can and can't carry uh, and things like that. So, I mean, like I said, I have that blank right there. We'd have to talk about price, and I mean, the the reason why like everybody flips out like how much why does it cost so much? Well, I got the electricity here at the house. The water it takes for cool, for cooling and th I mean I'm using probably when I make a knife I probably wind up using about 20 gallons 30 gallons of water because I have to keep dumping that I have to dump that bucket out like just to dip I mean even just dipping it has to be deep enough that I can get into it um, I let it sit for a little bit but the problem is it can't let it sit I have mosquitoes and I don't have flies and it, it sits there and it gets nasty so um, you know, just all the little things I have to consider and the fact that abrasives, the price of abrasives has went through the fucking roof. So has steel. So it can put a bad taste in people's mouths. Like, okay, how much? Oh my God. Uh, and the fact that I still have things that I have to buy to, before I can even make that knife, there's things that I have to purchase to be able to do it. Um, I need another scotch Bright wheel. I need another set of Arbor reducers. I need... The abrasives I need. I need a. I don't necessarily need leather, but I do. I don't have a tumbler here, so I, I'd have to figure that out. I imagine I go up to Jake's. Jake has one of those vibrating tumblers. I could probably toss something up. But Jacob creates place up there. Use his for an hour or so. So we can definitely talk about it. Um, that's pretty much what I've got right now. I have two more blanks for the. Uh, um, drawing a blank here. I'm drawing a blank. The, oh, the, the Vipers. I have two more Viper blanks that I can do as well. Those are the last two that I have for those. I would have to make them all. Yeah, I have to make them all from scratch now. Um, I did get those blown out water jet. And the thing is, like, everybody thinks water jet. Oh, well, these water jet, you just, it's, it's plug and play. It's done. I was like, no, it's absolutely not. 
Um, when you grind, when, when it, something comes back from water jet, it's not dimensionally the same. You, you actually oversize it because there's a blowout. So that, that water jet cones out as it's going through the material. And so what you get is you get a nice crisp edge here, but then there's an angled. So you have to even it and true it back up. You're still doing a lot of grinding. You're still doing a lot of sizing. You, you, it's not like you, it's not like if you water jet a knife, you can just put it together. And I've argued that was like, well, oh, I don't understand why LA takes so long to build a knife. It's all water jet. It's just done. I was like, it's not like wire EDM where you can, where everything's dimensionally almost exactly the way you want it. And that, that's a super long time consuming process. There's still a lot of handwork that has to be done. Like everybody just seems to think, oh, you got a water jet. It's done. No, it's not. There's still a ton of work. Nothing is dimensionally the way you want it. Um, the water jet does not leave a nice crisp line. You still have to grind things down. And I mean, basically all it does is saves you a day. It, it saves you probably in the long run doing water jet. It probably saves you maybe two hours per knife because the only thing you're saving time on is the amount of time it takes you to cut the, the rough blank out on an angle grinder and get this roughly sized to your line and then then cut the you know because you use an angle grinder you cut in cut in cut in and then you come through and you sweep out and you cut 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 and you come in and sweep out like you do with a bandsaw relief cuts and you just take it out and then all you have to do is clean it up so basically that's the only time saving has been the, the amount of time to take you with an angle grinder which to tell you the truth is not that long so you it really only saves you that but then you're not having to buy angle grinder uh what's up bradley um I don't know if you know this, cutoff wheels for an angle grinder are expensive. And that, that's just basically what it saves you is that price. Um, I'm probably going to order when the new YouTube, when the next YouTube payment comes in, I'm going to order a, a, a half inch scotch Bright wheel and a set of uh, Arbor, Arbor reducers because I can't find a 5 8 uh, scotch Bright wheel with a 5 8 Arbor Scotch Brite wheel. The only thing I can find is a half inch, and I have to reduce that down to five eighths. And so you just buy a set of Arbor reducers, and then you put them in your wheel. So the only problem is the ones I bought, they're out of stock right now. So, or I would have them already. So my grinder has some weird dimensions. But yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get, I have a blank that I'm gonna try to get cut out for a scout carry hip carry which do you think is more common to use? i like scout carry because i can just cross body it i can just put it on my left side like right above my left pocket and just cross draw it it's just more convenient for me i don't like hip pocket i know a lot of people do i carry this i carry pocket i bet i carry it front pocket um i don't like hip pocket carry as much anymore because I'm old and I have sciatica and I sit on it and it hurts my then my back starts to hurt um, so what I do is when I'm walking around my phone is in my pocket and then of course before I sit down I take my phone out of my pocket and then I don't have to worry about putting pressure on my sciatic nerve because it does when you get older it's me young kids that have no idea what that's like um, there, there's a guy on here that like he's been down for like literally two months uh, Uh, well, welcome back. No, I, I mean, I, I don't like carrying anything in. I can carry in my left hip pocket. That's where my wallet is. I don't have any problems, with, but I have sciatica on the right hand side. And I have for a few years now. And if I carry it, if I sit on something in my right hip pocket, I, I wake I get up the next morning and I can't walk. I'm like, oh my God, it hurts all the way down my leg. And that's why I'm really careful about how I sit on this work. If you were to watch how I sit at this workbench, I'm not putting any pressure on my right ass cheek. Cause it, I'll get to where I just can't even walk. I need to get some more coffee. So, yeah, I, I, I don't like to carry hip pocket. Well, my wallet's already there, and then I just would. I mean, most of the time, I'm not going to do anything that the cop is even going to stop me, and I guarantee. I'm not going to get pulled over because my car is still listed as federal law enforcement. <laughs> I got my plates. I got my plates listed and I just never changed the plates. So I guarantee they're still listed with the DMV. 
Um, my wife's car is not, however. Um, so I doubt, you know, I'm not going to get pulled over very often. Um, so... <laughs> Working for the government did have its benefits. All right, Snuzz. Uh, like I said, I'm probably going to get off of here too. Um, it's uh, I do have a video going up, and like I said, uh, if you if you want to look at those tools lists, um, I've compiled it. It's down. It should be in here. Everything except for the drill press. Um, the drill press thing that I found, uh, and like I said, it's like forty six bucks. I found a used one for less. So I have a tendency, I have been known to carry um, behind my belt buckle, a large folder behind the belt buckle. Matter of fact, for a lot of years, that's where the DA, the, my Microtech DOC rode really well like that. I would put it in my waistband right behind my belt buckle. And the thing is, if you go somewhere, they have metal detectors and you've got like a big like cowboy belt buckle, like that's, I used to wear that all the time before my beer gut got to where it, <laughs> it was trying to, felt like it was cutting me in half. Um, I would put my DOC right behind my, my bull rider belt buckle. It looks like a bull rider belt buckle, that's what I'm saying. So like if you've got, I don't even think I have a belt buckle out here. They, it used to, I used to keep them in this drawer. But yeah, if, if you've got one of those, um, I've, I've taken stuff to the county fair and they wand you and they're like, you got a belt? Yeah, I have a belt buckle. And they're like, can you turn it? And you just turn your belt buckle over. And if you're careful how you do it, they won't see the knife. But yeah, that DOC, this big bitch rode behind my belt buckle for a long time. That's a lot of knife. And most people aren't looking there. God, that thing is still, I, I need to get, I need to carry this. I need to do a revisiting on this. You guys want to see another video about the DOC? The first knife that, the first, I think I already did one, but I love this knife so much. It's the first video on this channel. The very first video I ever shot was the Microtech DOC. I will do that. I'll revisit some of these knives. I love Microtech. I, I really, a lot of people complain, but you, like I have several Microtechs. And you just can't. And I have a Microtech adjacent. Because that's Tony Marfion Jr. That's TJ. That's uh, Tony's boy. And I'm not going to lie. These heretic knives, they knock their shit out of the park, too. This is a great, great knife. So, button lock auto. Yeah, heretic. So, all right, guys. You know what to do. Like it. Don't like it. Tell me why. The affiliate link. It's down below with that. Be good to each other in the comment section. And I love you all. And I'll see you at 4 p.m. Maybe. I might be at the ice rink with my daughter. I'm not sure yet. But we definitely will be doing the 4 p.m. video. I just might not be in the live chat. So, um, And if you don't, Peter's still here. Go follow Peter's channel. He does a really good job there over at uh, Therapeutic Edge. And then, of course, go and follow Jared if you don't already. You guys, take it easy. Later. <laughs> That's not the button. <laughs>